Welcome to our channel, Behind My Story. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hi, my name is Sandra, and I'm 17 years old. People used to call me Evil Eyes, not because I had a strange face, but because of my eyes. I had a genetic mutation, so my eyes were different colors. One was light gray, and the other was dark brown. This effect made me look like an evil witch, a point of morbid curiosity. Whenever I would enter a public area, People would follow me with their eyes. Whenever children would see me, they would begin crying in fear. I had very few friends because people mocked whoever hung around with a freak like me. Society's negative reaction to my condition forced me to wear a light gray colored contact lens over my dark brown eyes so that both eyes appeared light gray in color. One day, a poetry reading contest was held in my area. I should have considered this to be an excellent opportunity for me because I used to be a very good poetry reader, but I stopped due to the people making fun of my eyes. So when I learned about the contest, I wasn't as excited as I normally would have been. Nevertheless, my mom encouraged me to take part in the contest. As I considered my mom to be my best friend, I took her advice. The day of the contest arrived. It was being held in the National City Theater with a panel of judges. There were some of the highly regarded poets in the country. A huge audience had bought tickets to attend the event. The competition was fierce, because there were many skilled poets in there, and they were very confident. As for myself, I was worried and nervous. I wore sunglasses to hide my mismatched eyes. This was part of my presentation, but no one knew that. I could hear some people whispering behind my back, wondering why the stupid girl was wearing sunglasses inside a building. I heard a good number of silly, stupid, hurtful, whispered comments. In due course, my turn came, and I went up on stage and began my reading. The audience mumbled to each other as I read. The judges seemed to be pleased. The poem I was reading was about my genetic peculiarity. At a suitable point, I removed my sunglasses to reveal what my poem was about. My mismatched eye colors. I expected gasps of shock or laughter from the audience, but nothing happened. The audience continued listening quietly and respectfully. After I finished my reading... The audience applauded warmly. Mom was crying tears of joy and pride. I was pleasantly surprised by the audience response. I honestly had expected much worse. Well, I didn't win the contest. I wasn't the best poet by a long shot. But what I gained was much more. Pride and confidence in knowing that I had faced my fear and gained acceptance from everyone there. Now I have a new nickname. Wonder Eyes. He was a dream. The future or so I thought. But my love was cursed right from the start. Sounds a bit confusing, right? Let me explain. But first, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Carolyn. I was a dreamer. I dreamed of a good, warm, stable, successful life. I wanted a good job. And I wanted to travel around the world a bit with Helen. She was my best friend. We virtually shared the same dreams, and hobbies, and interests, and lifestyles. We've been friends since we were kids. People often thought that we were sisters. I did too, in fact. She even got jealous if anyone tried to get close to me. Every day, Helen and I worked a little more towards our dreams. Once, when Helen and I were traveling with some of our friends, we had a problem with a hostess on the plane. A gentleman intervened and cleverly solved our problems. His name was Danny. I liked him. A lot. I thought about him often. But whenever I talked to Helen about him, she told me that he was not as amazing as I seemed to think he was. Coincidentally, I met him again at a party of a mutual friend. We talked together till daylight. I told Helen about our encounter, and she expressed her wishes that my love story would have a happy ending. I similarly told her that I hoped she would find the love of her life someday too. Everything would be okay, we figured. Then, one day, I received a letter in our mailbox. It was in weird handwriting as if the writer had written it with a trembling hand. I opened it curiously. It said that my love for Danny would become a curse if I didn't give him up and get him out of my life. What nonsense, I thought. Whose idea of a silly joke was this? I immediately called Danny and Helen to tell them about the letter. Danny laughed, but Helen was worried and suggested that I should be careful from now on. That same day, Danny had a horrible car accident, but fortunately he wasn't hurt. A detective investigating the case determined that his car brakes had been tampered with. 
In another incident, a car almost hit me, but it swerved away at the last minute. When I mentioned this incident to Danny, he tried to calm me down and told me to just forget about it. He gave me a beautiful bracelet as a present and proposed. We got engaged, and I couldn't have been happier. I wanted to show the bracelet to Helen, but somehow I seemed to have lost it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Anyway, when I told Helen about his proposal, she was thrilled for me. I spent days shopping for just the right wedding dress. I was so busy with preparations that I forgot all about the ominous letter. I went to the wedding hall early to make sure that everything was ready and prepared. Helen was helping me, and Danny kept calling me to make sure I was all right. Suddenly, the lights went out. I called out to Helen, worried that she might have tripped and fallen when the lights were out. When the lights came back on, Helen had fainted, and my dress had disappeared. I screamed to the ceiling, What do you want from me? Leave me alone! Suddenly, Danny appeared out of nowhere and asked me what had happened. I told him, then and there, that we must break off our engagement, otherwise the curse the letter mentioned might injure someone or cause someone to die. Then Helen came to and tried to calm me down. She told me to go to the car and that she would get our stuff and follow me. I loved Danny and wanted to marry him, but now I was seriously worried that this curse threat might actually be real. Helen came back carrying a bag and a large suitcase and told Danny not to worry that she would drive me home and then call him to tell him that we had arrived safely. I was still crying and Helen was trying to calm me down. When we arrived home, I noticed something strange. Helen was carrying a bag that was partially open and I glimpsed a piece of clothing stuffed into it. It looked exactly like my dress. I opened the bag and found that it was my dress. I confronted Helen and demanded to know how my missing dress ended up in her bag. I clearly caught her red-handed, and she was unable to answer coherently. I realized at that moment that the source of the so-called curse was Helen. Helen, I said, how dare you do this to me? I thought we were like sisters to each other, she replied icily, with a glare that I saw for the first time. She said that she fell in love with Danny just as I did, but he chose me instead of her, and that she hated me for it. She said she won him over, and got him to love her instead. Then they both tried to scare me into calling off the wedding, so that she and Danny could be together. There are no words to describe how I felt at the time. I replied in a similar tone. I told her that I don't ever want to see her again, or Danny. Neither of them mattered anymore. I never did see Helen or Danny after that day. I'm on a Caribbean island now, sipping on a cocktail. I read in the paper that Danny and Helen had announced their engagement. I'm thinking about what wedding present I should give them, as a surprise. I confess that I love money and fame. People envy me for it, or they did. I've been a prima donna since the day I was born. All girls dreamt of being me. My father helped my brother and I achieve all our dreams. But there was one fly in the ointment, and this is my story. My name is Amelia. I'm 17 years old. My father's a businessman. My mother came from a rich family, so we were quite wealthy, rolling in dough, one might say. My brother Arthur was handsome, older than me. He went to flight school. We lived a good life without a care in the world. We had everything. Cell phones, clothes, cars, servants, opportunities to travel the globe. We wanted for nothing. The most important thing was our happiness. And so my story starts at the villa where I lived with my family. My father employed many servants to attend to our every need. Martha was our head servant. She was in her forties, funny, smart. Arthur and I loved her. Oddly, we didn't view her as a servant because she took such good care of us. Mother didn't seem to like her for some reason and was always mistreating her. Father, however, adored Martha. Once I left my iPod in the garden and I was going to get it, on my way to the garden, I passed by father's office, so I decided to go and talk to him. He was at his desk, and Martha was standing next to him, crying. I figured it was because mother had mistreated her again. Father saw me standing there, and he asked me why I was still awake, and I told him about my iPod. I didn't think much of it at the time. As time passed, mother and Martha's disputes became more frequent every day. Father wasn't home a lot, but whenever he came home, he would always ask about Martha first. One time, when this happened, I noticed that mother glared at father. I couldn't understand why. 
Father was often away traveling for long periods of time. One of those times, I noticed that Martha was always tired because Mother was making her work very hard. Mother never let her relax. One day, after midnight, I went to Martha's room to check on her, and I was shocked to see that she looked different than I remembered. I asked if she was pregnant, and she said that she was, but that I shouldn't tell anyone, otherwise she'd get fired. I didn't understand why my parents would fire her for being pregnant. A few days later, we received some really horrible news. Father's plane had crashed, and there were no survivors. We were stunned. All of us were crying, but Martha was crying especially hard. Suddenly, Martha fainted, and we took her to the hospital. Our life had changed overnight. After the funeral, Father's lawyer called us about Father's will. He came to our home and met my mother, Arthur, me, and Martha, and two other servants. The lawyer began reading the will. He started with Mother's inheritance, then mine, then Arthur's, and then Martha's. He looked at Martha, cleared his throat, and said in a quiet voice, Martha, the deceased has left you ten million to raise your child. The lawyer read the last line of Father's will which said, Martha's child is mine. We all gasped, but Mother suddenly lost it. Enraged, she attacked Martha as the lawyer pulled Mother away from her. Arthur was holding his head in his hands, and I was shocked. I said to Martha, how dare you? How dare you do this to us? This is our money. You don't deserve any of it. Then I spoke to the lawyer. Please tell me this isn't true. He replied helplessly. Unfortunately, it is. Arthur was glaring at Martha, and he said coldly, Martha, you are going to die. Martha looked very frightened upon hearing this. That night, the other servants helped Martha sneak out of the house. Arthur came to my room that same night and told me that we had to kill Martha. He said he knew where she was and that her ten million belonged to us. At first, I was hesitant to get involved. I mean, that was murder, but in the end, I reluctantly agreed to help him. The next day, we made a call and hired a hitman to rid us of that disaster. Later, we received a call from him. He said that Martha was no longer a problem. We smirked in victory. A few days later, the lawyer came by again. Before he could tell us why he came, we beheld a miracle. Our recently said-to-be deceased father was walking behind him with a servant holding a child. Arthur and I stared at him in disbelief and shock. Then we looked at each other. Arthur's face had gone pale white as all the blood drained from his face. Father was livid and said to us in an accusing manner, The moment you thought I was dead and that I left an inheritance for Martha, you immediately arranged to have her killed. I suspected you'd try something like this. It was pure luck that I got back when I did. I missed my flight that day, otherwise I would have been dead now. So fortunately, I came back early enough for Martha to call me and tell me about your death threat. When I arrived at Martha's place, she was already dead, but I called 911, and they were able to save the child. Then I immediately called my lawyer to revise my will, to leave half of my inheritance to this child. I felt like I was in an endless nightmare. The police arrived and told us that the hired killer had been arrested and had confessed and told the police that Arthur and I were the ones who hired him to kill Martha. As the policeman was handcuffing us to take us away, I thought about the irony, how Martha was dead, how her newborn baby had survived and was now the richest child in the country, how Arthur and I were going to jail and how one small fly in the ointment had caused our ultimate fall from grace.